Coming to you live here from Don Duncan Field at West Mitchelton Junior Rugby League Football Club. We've got junior action here at Mitchelton for the first time for you in 2021. Kenny Andres on the mic, thank you for your company. You'll be joining me as I cover this junior matchup between the hosting Brisbane Rhinos and the combined Wharton Bay Raptors and Sunshine Coast Spartans team that I will affectionately name the Raptans for the rest of the broadcast. But as you can see, the captain's out here for the coin toss. That is White Hat, Tim Redshaw, one of the most, if not the most senior White Hat official we have here in the Gridiron Queensland Officials Association. Now it looks like the Raptans have won the toss and they've elected to receive. They will be running right to left on your screen, dawned in their gray and orange uniform, one of the more unique uniforms in Gridiron Queensland, equally representing both the Morton Bay Raptors and the Sunshine Coast Spartans, of course, and the red and black, as always, the Brisbane Rhinos and their pewter helmets. Now, we've got a matchup between two teams desperately looking for another win in the ledger. We've got the one and four Brisbane Rhinos, the two and one Raptans here. The Rhinos picked up their first victory last week after a bit of a slow start with certainly a whole lot of new players there. Only three returning players in this Brisbane Rhinos lineup. But last week, and after three weeks of getting better each game, they finally came together and got a 34-32 victory over the Logan City Bears. Meanwhile, the Raptans, hailing from both Morton Bay and the Sunshine Coast, they had a shootout with the Gold Coast Stingrays, who still lead the league after a 46-30 victory over the Raptans last week. So two teams here who are likely to feature in the playoffs and like your senior competition. The number one seed automatically qualifies for the Sun Bowl on December 11th, while positions two and three will duke it out in some semi-final football the week prior. So set to kick off for us, it is both kicker and quarterback Alan Kennedy. And back deep to return for the Raptans. One of which, number 28, Stuart Ella. And alongside him, the 88, I believe, in Ben Keogh, who I thought would not be playing today. And I will just maybe double check. That could be a 38 on there. I'm trying to work out these numbers as we go. But seconds away, junior division football about to be kicked off and gotten underway here from West Michi, home of the Brisbane Rhinos. Two head coaches this afternoon here. We have Fraser Murr, hailing from England in his first year as a head coach, started as a assistant in the junior division last year, taking over the reins here in 2021. His opposition, uh, the very experienced now, Jared Garrity. So Kennedy will kick us off. It's a nice kickoff. We'll sit up nicely in the wind and we'll be fielded by the 58. My apologies. Just not on the roster. That's always a wonderful start. No, it's 98 by the time that number gets near me. It's a wonderful return that will take the Raptans into Rhino's territories to start off. Of course, there is no number 98 on my roster. Good start to the day. And as we look at the replay there, you can see the wonderful skills, and I will get a confirmation on this young man sooner rather than later, but that set up his offense with a wonderful field position. So starting now for the, the Raptans here, I believe it's number four in Tom. Huber. His dad, John, is also the offensive coordinator. Helped coach in the New Orleans Saints during the NFL lockout year, so plenty of extensive experience there for the starting quarterback today, Huber. Here he is in the pistol, and they'll go speed Osham to start off with taking his first carry of the day, and it's a good one, a first one, first down already on the first play from scrimmage for the Raptors. On the 14-yard carry there, is the number 20 
The starting running back is going to be number seven, Gio Stowers Alamani, but that is a uh, mystery number 24 here. And I'm going to have to get a double check with some of these numbers here because there's a no 25 on the roster given to me. In any case, first down and 10. Ball on the Rhinos 25. Good field position here for the Raptors. Huber, still in the pistol, no formation change, another run play. And he has been an absolute load to bring down these last two players. That will bring them well and truly into the red zone here. A good opening possession here for the Sunshine Coast Morton Bay side. Just going through, making sure I've missed any rocks to give to me. I've been positioned right next to the, uh, the ground speaker here, so you will be getting a healthy dose of music being played to you this afternoon. Another spread formation here. They haven't changed formation at all over their opening drive. Another carry this time to the outside to that man who will score the... No, he will get inside the five. A solid tackle there by a linebacker, Finian O'Hare. That will take him down inside the five here. So this is a wonderful opening possession here for the Raptors. Two wins under the belt so far. Looking for win number three. A touchdown on the first possession of their day. And put them in good stead. Information once again. There might be a little check on the line there from Huber. At the four and a half yard line, they'll another run and it's a fumble. Can this be recovered by the runners? It can't. Picking it up there is the other mystery man. So far, all the plays being made by two players not on my roster. <laughs> And you can just see the big, heavy contact made there on the replay coming through. This You're joking. Number 80. I'm starting to think I've got no players on my rosters here. Number 93 making a play there. The Raptans get out of jail with that one there. Second down and goal. They did lose a yard or two in there. They'll go speed option again. This will be Huber's first carry of the game, and it's well defended once again. I think that's O'Hare making the play. Proven to be a valuable sideline to sideline defender early in this matchup. Third down now, a chance for the Rhinos here to uh, really get away with some struggling defense in their first drive. In the red zone now, two big plays, almost recovered a fumble just to play a go, another run stop. Just on the ensuing play there. Third down and goal, ball at the eight. Two receivers out to the left, wide side of the field. Will they pass? For the first time today, that they do! Pass incomplete intended there for Kai Pierman Mode, one of the senior players on this left hand outfit. Pierman Mode also one of a good half dozen Sunshine Coast players on this combined outfit here. Fourth down now. It will be interesting to see how many of these junior teams have developed a bit of a PAT game, particularly as the junior division, for the first time, has lifted to 11 a side. So probably some groundbreaking news that's been swept under the rug a little bit amongst the, uh, the shrinkage, we'll call it, in Gridiron Queensland this year as the sport continues to recover from the year that was 2020. In any case... On fourth down, they wanted to go for it, and it looked like it was going to be some sort of sprint out pass to the left, but 
White Hat. Referee Tim Redshaw says that that's the end. Nope, that's a yeah, timeout. Thought for a second we might have been at the end of a quarter already, but it looks like it was a timeout called there by the Rhinos. Nil all, your score is. Spartans still on their opening possession. However, however they've faced with a fourth and goal from their own nine. And you might take this opportunity to acknowledge your sponsors for this game here today for the Brisbane Rhinos. You've got Australian manufactured vehicles, ice sponsor, and resistance sports science, and for the Raptors there. And you've got Morton Bay Regional Council, Federal MP Luke Howard, and local MP Chris Whiting. Big thank you to all the sponsors making this junior stream happen here in round six, Gridiron Queensland Junior Division. Fourth and goal now from the Rhinos nine. A big stand here. A possibility for the Brisbane Rhinos. The Raptans desperately trying to prevent otherwise what is a fantastic opening drive finish with zero points. They'll go the pitch option. The ball hits the deck. This will be recoverable. It is fourth down. Regardless, this is a positive outcome here for the home side. The Brisbane Rhinos withstand the first assault by the Raptans. They'll jump on the ball for the first time. Nil all our score remains after the opening possession. As you can see, just running out of gas there towards the back end of this drive on the replay. Huber wanting the pitch option there. And pitch goes a little behind goes a little behind his man, causing the fumble. Nevertheless, Rhino's defenders were in pretty good position, even if that was a perfect pitch. So the Rhinos now, they'll have their first chance for the football starting on their own eleven yard line. Kennedy will open this with a pass downfield, incomplete, and that pass was intended to the wide receiver Yasir Namir. Incomplete, second and ten, ball still on the Rhinos, 11. Kennedy now, he's uh, only recently taken the reins of the starting quarterback position, if memory serves correctly, I think Yusra Patama also took some time behind center there before they ultimately felt he was a better use of the team as a bit of a utility player. In fact, I've got him listed as an athlete rather than a specific position. Now it's a toss option here for the Rhinos, and this is their starting running back. That is Jai Camilleri. With his first carry of the day, penalty mark is down on the far side of the field, down around the 11 yard line. So, right now, the Raptors' defense looking pretty sturdy themselves. So, the Brisbane Rhinos still probably riding high and just getting the call here. It is against the Brisbane Rhinos, a block in the back called on that play. They'll Marching backwards, half distance to the goal. So we'll see a double six situation here. A chance now for the Raptans to sort of aim up defensively and try to earn themselves some solid field position for their second possession. I think they're just officially marking off the distance now. That'll set them up around the five and a half, six yard line. In fact, it's going to take them exactly where I called, just beyond the five yard line. So second down, rather long now, looking at about 17 yards approximately. Five. The next two plays to try and get back there. On third down, they'll dump this off to Camilleri. Camilleri can't do a whole lot with it though. The tackle is uh, good there from the linebacker in number 57, Hunter Harris one. Now they'll have a third and a long. That is the home side, the Brisbane Rhinos. Looking at about 15 yards here to continue this drive. Third and long here. Kennedy's first real test so far. Started first down with a long pass. Want to go back to a very similar look and play. Pass falls short of his intended receiver. Once again, Namir, the intended target.
fourth down now and a very likely punting situation here that the Rhinos will want to be careful. The Raptans could bring some heat here and try to wreak some havoc here on special teams. Will Kennedy, who was their kicker, could possibly serve as their punter. That will be the case. I think the Raptans were a little confused. Their punting formation looked pretty much identical to their uh, offensive formations of that drive there. So they played defense, which allowed the Rhinos to get a solid 45-yard kick. And that pushed the Raptans back inside their own terri territory by a yard. So they'll start on their own 44. And just to remind everyone who might be watching Gridiron in Australia, it's Gridiron in Queensland for the very first time. 90 yard field here in Gridiron, Queensland due to the rugby league coach used at every field. So instead of the taking the yardage out of the end zone, we do 10 yard end zones and take the, the 10 yards out from the middle of the field. So it goes 45, 50, 45. Or 40, 50, 45, I should say. I think we're just making sure the chains are actually moved here. We have the confusion with the chain gang that it marks as if the Rhinos were still on offense. Good spot there from our officiating team today. Hube is back. And we still have one of our two mystery men at tailback. Two big carries to start last drive. That's another good one there. Picks up about four and a half yards, maybe five by the end of it here on first down. All running from both sides, probably moving this portal along swimmingly. You can see the solid blocking there on replay by the Raptans, and one of which is the 20, should be the 30, and I wish for cash, but he's a wide receiver, so I'll take that comment back. First down and 10, but it looks like there might have been some. Might have been a penalty marker down, I did not spot. Because the Raptans have been moved back a few yards. And I'm just waiting to see if that might have been the end of the first quarter. It is not. It was, in fact, a penalty. Likely a hold on the play because now the, the Spartan Raptors are operating from their own 34 yard line. Double sticks for them now. First and 20. The assignment, Huber wants to go long for the first time today. He's got a man open and through the hands of what could have been a very long play. Letting that one slip is Kai Pierre Mamode. And he is a very fast young man. I would have possibly backed him to go the distance had he could have looked that one in. Instead, his team has got second and 20. Twenty now here. Both teams still chasing another victory. Back end of the first quarter. It is the Raptors are running back, charging forward, breaking tackles and earning a good chunk of yardage back. That will get him past the forty. In fact, to the forty-one. And that will give them a third and thirteen. Joseph Fairhill, you see the center for the Spartan Raptors. A rookie, but already strong command over this line. He'll snap it to Huber. Good drop by him. Let's it fly. And this time he has got Pierre Mamode. And Pierre Mamode keeps his feet in bounds. And they convert on a third and 13. A lovely throw there. Huber to Pierre Mamode. Now, 
getting it vertical after starting a red day on the ground. First down and 10 following that big pass. Huber. Not a whole lot of variation in formations here for the Spartan Raptors. A pitch out to the left will earn them another, close to another first down. In fact, the chains are a moving. Having no trouble moving between the 20s, the Spartan Raptors. The test will be whether they can come back down to this red zone and turn their possessions into points. It's a lot here in the first quarter, second red zone visit for the Morton Bay Sunshine Coast Spartan Raptors. Ball on the Rhinos, 15. Also had a couple of fumbles. Last drive here. Let's see if they fix that up. Rolling out is Hubar, wanting his favorite target in Pima Moda once again. Over the head it goes. Over two in targets in the red zone of Pima Moda so far, but he did pick up that big catch earlier in this drive. Second down and ten. in the right slot other wide receivers you're looking at there Eden Neal and Joham Tunga Tua your near side wide receivers Huba another sprint pass out to the right looking back over the middle this time can't connect intended receiver there I think Hayden Cinnamon <laughs> passing complete on second down so a third and ten here went vertical last time they had a third and long situation and found a way to keep the drive alive they can convert here without actually scoring they've got about four and a half yards maybe five to play with to earn themselves another four cracks at the end zone Ball now here on the left hash. All passes have aimed out to the right so far. Possibly an early snap here, but it's a draw play and a beautiful run here. Excellent execution here from the Spartan Raptors off offense. And that will be our verse score of the day. Coming to uh, the running back number 25. And there it is, going to the ground on third and long. Coming up, Trumps. Sorry, two-point conversion attempt here. Right side of the field providing the joy so far here for the Spartan Raptors. A jump pass back to Cinnamon. And that's another two points here. A successful drive by the Morton Bay at Sunshine Coast Raptor team. 8-0 your score here towards the back end of the first. now we get another chance to answer back they were it's a bad field position to start their first offensive drive 
for the day, starting on their own 11. Had to punt the ball away on a three and out. They did manage to force the Spartan Raptors back to halfway. But alas, it wasn't enough to prevent their first touchdown for this afternoon. Round six, Gridiron Queensland Dream Division action. Brisbane Rhinos taking on the Moreton Bay Sunshine Coast. Raptor side, the Raptors and the Spartans combined unit. Here's another situation that would be uh, unique to a lot of players who might not play 11 aside special teams and particularly kick return when so many returners are used to the uh, the space available to them at 9 aside all of a sudden field condenses a whole lot as the Raptans go for an onside kick and I think they'll come away with this one that they do some sneakiness on the play there and Recovering it is number 98. I'm still waiting for a confirmation on who these key players are from 98 and 25. And we are finally getting some confirmation here on those players are. So they are not new players, there has been a jersey switch. <laughs> Looks like Giovanni Stowers Elamani has moved from jersey number 7 to number 25. And the man who just recovered that last kickoff is the young lad they call Soup. And here goes Giovanni Elam Stowers Elamani with another big carry. His second touchdown of the day. The Spartan Raptors managed to uh, steal another possession on the onside kick and do not wait long before punching another one in the end zone. The score now. 14 nil. Two touchdowns and a two-point conversion. Two-point conversion to come now following that Stowers Alamani run. Bar. We'll give it to the man of the moment who will race the defenders to the pylon. We'll try to break a tackle, but ultimately a two-point saving tackle. To number 22. In any case, 14 nil the score now following that Stowers Elamani run. As looks like Luke Borg is announced from the currently on hiatus group at the University of Thunder. As the numbers continue to pile in here at Don Duncan Field, West Mitchie Rugby League. And I wouldn't call this one quite the onside kick attempt, but they gave themselves half a chance here. And the Spartan Raptors have grabbed another one. And right now, Alan Kennedy and his runners' offense are feeling a bit cold. The last two possessions taken away from them on special teams. And just unable to field that last kickoff, bouncing off the knees of the number 30 and the Ayush Prakash. So can Stowers Elamani add his third touchdown in less than five plays. So the fourth possession now for the Spartan Raptors. 
chance to grab a big lead here. We're still not even out of the end of the first. Huber. Protection is clean, has a chance to go deep, wants Pierre Mamoud, has got Pierre Mamoud inside the 15. And I think both players there forgetting that once you are down here under IFAF rules, you are down. I think both players accepted that they both forgot there. Pierre Mamoud jumped up wondering if he could extend the play and also coming through to make the tackle, albeit unnecessarily. The number 19 and you're seeing them here, but wonderful protection there from the Morton Bay Sunshine Coast side. Huber had all day to throw and he took full advantage of it. And once again, third time, in fact, a fourth time, or third time really, today we are seeing this Morton Bay Sunshine Coast side inside the red zone. Huber. Looks right initially, that's where he's aimed all night and this is the exact same running play that he scored on for his first touchdown. He gets about a yard short but penalty markers are down back by our referee Tim Redshaw who quickly signals a hold against the Brisbane Rhinos. So wipe that run off the board and we will see first down once again. And this first quarter feels like it's gone on for a little while now but that's because we've had all the stoppages through special teams with this sneaky rap down side finding ways to keep their offense on the field 14 nil your score is here and as i speak it looks like nope check that another premature quarter call by me just marking off the distance as it is first and 20 now for mbsc They run running the exact same formation almost every time here. Raptors varying via play call rather than formation. Huber extending the play out to the right. Wanted his receiver there in Eden Neal, the rookie receiver. Pass sailing over the top of him though, and that'll bring up second and 20. Eden Neal has sort of been trying to find his feet in the uh, the sport of gridiron through these first half of the first opening weeks of the season here has been looking for a spot his coach jared garrity believes he's probably found a spot here at slot receiver earning his first target there from huber so far this game it's no secret now that the strength of the offense seems to be on the right side passing attack as well as the carriers to this young man stowers elamani Adding touchdown, number four. Flight penalty markers down. Number three, my apologies. And it's another holding call here against the Spartan Raptors. And a 10 yard carry two plays ago wiped away. And now the Spartan Raptors shooting themselves in the foot. And a chance for the Brisbane Rhinos to try to capitalize on some of this ill discipline. They've gone from defending from their own 10 to seeing the Spartan Raptors move back well beyond the red zone. Ball is now currently marked at the 21 with a few more yards to be tacked on, I think. That is correct. The extra holding call now sets them up at the Rhinos 32. More or less where they started this drive. Second down and too long to mention. Giovanni Stowers Alamani has managed to find production no matter where they've started on the field so far. However, this Spartans Raptors offense has only operated in their own territory for one play, which was when the uh, Brisbane Rhinos managed to get a punt to finish one yard into Spartan Raptors territory. Huber, high snap, but collects nicely, loads and throws to Pierre Mamoud. Pierre Mamoud waits, he's got it, tries to juke inside. The knee goes down inside the five there. I think he's got enough to convert. We'll see where the final marking goes. He might have been just short. Nope, enough for the first town by millimeters. So it will be first and goal here for Morton Bay Sunshine Coast. That is becoming a dangerous threat. They've missed. On their fair share of short passes, Pierre Mamoud and Huber. 
And when they've hit, they've hit big. And that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter where the Norton Bay Sunshine Coast Spartan Raptors, they lead the Brisbane Runners 14 points to nil. Once again, a big thank you to all our sponsors. I'm sure they'll be flashed across the screen shortly. Gridiron, big thank you to uh, Morton Bay Regional Council, the Federal MP, Luke Howell from local MP Chris Whiting. Our sponsor for the Brisbane Aranos, OzMV, Australian and Manufactured Vehicles, as well as Resistance Sports Science, based in Inogra, for making this broadcast happen. End of one, what ultimately felt like quite a lengthy first quarter. We slip fields now and still in the red zone, obviously, but on the other side of the field, which we've been yet to see by a kickoff. Huber now. Under center, gives it to Stowers Alamani, who's in for another, but yet. Another penalty, mark it down. The offensive line for the Spartan Raptors just teasing Stowers Alamani for his third touchdown. And not yet another hold. Same result, same story. And Jordan Huber, I imagine he's going to have some Clear instructions for his front five. Next opportunity has a chance to talk to them. That's two touchdowns, three plays, three big plays on the ground are wiped off thanks to holding calls. Cinnamon and Pierre Mamote here right side. Neil in the left slot. They go to the exact same play that was Alamani, he'll get to the one, tries to reach out, but the Rhinos defenders, they pull him down. As things start to get a little bit chippy here, I think is oh, the number 93 who's off, currently not listed on my roster. He possibly has drawn a flag, but is it going to be against Stowers Alamani or is it going to go against the defender? And we've also got an injured Rhino here. Coming off the field there is Callan Milner. He's going to be replaced there from Yassir Namir. And the sportsman-like conduct call is going to be called against Stowers Elamani. So the poor discipline continues. And you can see that penalty was probably the result of a bit of frustration. Two uh, touchdowns called back on holdings and... Twice now, Stowers Elamani has been stopped at the one, and the Rhinos are going to take a chance to take a breather here. They've taken a timeout here on the play. I believe that's their second. Still waiting for confirmation on who called the first timeout, but at the very least, that's one down to the Brisbane Rhinos. Start of the second quarter. Another acknowledgement to our sponsors there for the Brisbane Rhinos. OzMV, I sponsor and Resistance Sports Science and Nogra and for the visiting Sunshine Coast and Morton Bay Spartan and Raptors and Morton Bay Regional Council Federal MP Luke Howarth and local MP Chris Whiting. As we're seeing both teams, I don't know who's more frustrated at the moment. Obviously the Brisbane Rhinos are the ones who've surrendered two touchdowns. But the Spartan Raptors, the team failing to execute in the red zone thought their red zone blues might have been washed away after their last possession got them inside for a touchdown. Two possessions ago they managed to get on the board initially from Stowers Alamani and Stowers Alamani got in from long range to give us this 14-0 scoreline. See if the breather's done both of these teams. 
some productive cooling down. It's Huber, hard snap, hard count I should say, before giving it off to their star playmaker and Stowers Elamani uses the right arm for a stiff arm, but surprise, surprise. The penalty mark has come out once more. And this is going to be a real test of resilience for both of these teams now, but probably in particular the Morton Bay Sunshine Coast side. And that's assuming this penalty is against them. It is and once again. That's their third holding this drive. And they try not to be negative in the call here, but the, the penalties they keep racking up. Four penalties on this drive. They were penalty free until this drive. Bring up a repeat second down. And it's almost a little comical at this point. Last drive, they got marched back close to 30 yards in penalties. Well, penalties and, and bad plays before finding a way to convert on third and double sticks. I think it was a third and 13. And they got inside the four pima mode. Slipped up before being able to get the ball into the, re into the end zone. This led them to a first and goal, but now they've moved back out past the 20 once more. Second down and goal to go, but from the 22. Cuba rolls out to the right, looking for Pima Mode, but pass is uncatchable, and that'll bring up a third down. This could be a huge win here for the Brisbane Rhinos. Of course, likely four down territory here. I don't believe there is a recognized kicker on the Morton Bay Sunshine Coast side. That could add three. So right now their lead is 14-0. They'll have two players to try to extend that. The Brisbane Rhinos looking to desperately get their offense on the field. Third and goal from the Rhinos, 23. And quite possibly offensive coordinator, John Huber could just be dialing up a play here to halve this distance, get to the 10 or thereabouts, and then try to set up for a fourth down play for the red zone. And by all means, could take two shots for six right now. Huber, again, doing well to pick up the high snap and he tries to get a bit of a screen out to the right to Stowers Alamani. Passes off target and now we will have fourth and goal from the Rhinos 23. So real opportunity here for the Rhinos defense to step up. There are a lot of hands on hips though. They've had to do a lot of defending here through this first half. Head coach Fraser Murr giving as much encouragement as he can from the sideline. Also starting to begin chats now with his offense. I see him having a one-on-one -on -one there with Jai Calamari. Only had the one carry so far. He's looking to really make up for lost time on this next drive. And this is finally a bad snap. is a bit too much to handle here for Huber. He's going to have to improvise. He's got a mountain of work to do, and it won't be enough. And the Brisbane Rhinos not only stopped them on fourth down, but managed to grab another few yards for their offense to start off with the ball. First drive was on the 11, and we haven't seen them since. So they'll be well rested here. Their second drive of the game coming in almost towards the mid portion of the second quarter. Yeah. And we've got a player down here for the Brisbane Rhinos from the looks of it. Looks like a really bad cramp. It's Isra Pratama. And there is nothing subtle about the pain that he's currently in. If it is cramp, he is reaching for the, his back left hamstring. It's getting massaged out by the trainer. It has become very warm down here in the inner west of Brisbane. I thought we might have been seeing a bit of rain, but it's held off and left a healthy amount of mugginess here at West Mitchie. And for those who have not hydrated well, you will be found out this afternoon because I don't believe this temperature is coming down anytime soon.
Ian Bertrand's face is just out of camera shot now, but I've got a clear view of his face here. He is not even in a position to move. They're trying to move him off the sideline into safety, but he is quite clear and not wanting to move just quite yet. An excruciating pain the young man is. We're going to move on here. Certainly hope there isn't a run play out to the left because that could add to his dramas. A very late substitution here for the Brisbane Rhinos. Yet another name for me to work out as a 32 has been added to the roster. Put a game on a hold here as the time gets looked over. We might take a short break as well. And throw up some more sponsors. We'll be back shortly on the other side of this injury. All right, back on. It looks like I won't be on my lonesome for too much longer as Luke Borg will be getting ready maybe in the second half or even towards the back end of this quarter to jump in. I'll have someone to talk to other than myself. And here goes Camilleri with a big physical run trying to lay the lumber there. It was Hunter had a swan. But a solid run on first down for the Brisbane Rhinos. Oh, they pick up maybe three yards on the play here, second and seven. On their own uh, 27 here midway through the second quarter. Currently trailing the Raptors 14 0. Week 6 here, junior division. Ages 14 to 18. As Kennedy drops back to pass under pressure, though, has to roll to his left, throws across his body. Pass almost intercepted there by number 92, Kai Kerr. One of the more explosive players on this Sunshine Coast Morton Bay Raptor Spartan defense. And that'll bring up a third down conversion attempt here for the Brisbane Rhinos. And they've had to make another late substitution here. One more needle on offense, Kennedy. Looking back to his team and the Rhinos. They'll have to use another timeout now. I've got that officially marked down as their second, but that very well could be their third. We didn't get a confirmation in who called the first time out of the half. In the meantime, timeout Rhinos. A couple of stoppages on the play. In this quarter, had an injury and a couple of chain gang movements. Yeah, the choice of games being covered this week on Gridiron Queensland, obviously tuning into this one between the Brisbane Rhinos and Morton Bay Sunshine Coast Raptors Spartans, but down at the Gold Coast, I believe it's the Gold Coast Stingrays Juniors taking on the Logan City Bears Juniors. Almost all the games are covered this week. We have the Ravens and Stingrays covered at 7pm if memory serves correctly there in the senior division. We'll see if the Ravens can continue their winning streak even in the recent announcement of Darius Holiday Miller announcing his retirement from playing and of course for us from 4pm the USQ Mustangs are in town here at Mitchie looking to add their second win against the Brisbane Rhinos 
who will be looking to recover from their second loss of the season just a week ago. Third down conversion attempt here. The Rhinos defense, which quite frankly is most of the players on offense, just looking for a chance to have a bit of a breather here as Kennedy extends the play, tries to throw back across his body, looking for the seven in uh, Bell and Tony. Penalty markers are down on the Raptors' Spartan side of the field, though. We'll hold our breath to see whether that might be able to buoy the Rhinos into extending this drive. All but one penalty by my count so far against the Spartan Raptors. This time, okay. So I got a false start call. False start on the Rhinos. Well, I didn't think you could decline a dead ball foul like a false start. And then we've seen. Well, I'm also hearing that possibly it was an offside there, which isn't. Not the signal that I thought I was reading. In any case, offsetting penalties as I try to play guess the penalty. And it's repeat the down. Long pass here for Nasir. Oh! How about the concentration on display by that young man? Nasir Namir bringing a tight one here down the Rhino sideline. That sets up his offense on the Spartan Raptors 39. Take a look at that on replay once more. Kennedy with a pinpoint throw, both defender and attacker jostling for position and Namir comes away, trumps with that one. So, two big third, con third down conversions boasted from either offense now. First time inside Spartan Raptors territory. A pitch out to the right there to Calamari. And he'll pick up four yards on first down. And solid penetration on the right side of the line there from MBSC, but fortunately not the play side the Rhinos attacked. Second down, seven to go. Kennedy and Camillari in the backfield. Kennedy under pressure immediately evades the rush. Again, throwing back to the middle of the field. Looking for Bell and Tony. And the pass goes incomplete. And we've got the same third down conversion numbers they had at 20 yards ago. Likely a fourth down territory though, given the field position. They might even opt to run it here and take their chances on fourth down should the run not produce the conversion. Same formation. In fact, both offensive running almost identical formations. That's a nice quick throw on the verticals. Pass completed there to Bell and Tony. This time completing him outside the numbers. Very soft coverage from the Spartan Raptors. And the Rhino said, we'll take that. Conversion there on third down. Two third down conversions now. Both on the arm of Kennedy. And now. Spread formation once again. A left slot is our mystery man number 32. They're going to pitch it. No look past the Camilleri. But coming down hard is Soup. That is Sione Salupe uh, Fafida coming downhill and laying the lumber. So that'll move the Rhinos back. And now when the Spartan Raptors are 34, second down and 10. Second down and Sorry, closer to 20, my apologies. So 
right now the front is looking for some production earlier in their down counts. Kennedy under pressure, but he's handled it once again. This might have even been a design keeper. Loses his footing on the far side of Don, Don Duncan Field there. Right about where the line of scrimmage was. Picks up about a yard on that scramble though. Now they've got, by my guesstimation, third and 16. The line to gain is set at the Spartan Raptors 17-yard line. time here. I'm seeing uh, Bears to the right of me keeping a track of the play clock. And I think they were right on the money there because White Hat Timothy Redshaw <laughs> scored the delayed game on the Brisbane Rhinos. So the parent crew here to the right of me up in the clubhouse of West Mitchie doing a good job keeping track of the time left remaining. And just like their opposition, earning themselves some red zone territory and then marching themselves back with negative plays and penalties. So now we've got what I originally guesstimated as third and 16 to be third and 21. Ball from the Spartan Raptors, 37. Slow motion, we had a trips formation as a bit of a change there in the pass. Almost intercepted on the play there by number 28, Stuart Eller. And he's going to bring in a commentator for at least the next quarter or so, Luke Borg. But we've got a roughing the passer penalty, I think, against the Spartan Raptors, so that will be an automatic first. I don't know if we've got that on replay at all here. Yeah, missed that one there amongst all the action, but a play now that will... I don't know if it's roughing the pass or it's a generic unnecessary roughness, but in any case, it's a personal foul, which will give the Brisbane Riders automatic first. So, again, don't like focusing too much on negative play here, but these penalties are becoming increasingly damaging to the lead now from the Morton Bay Sunshine Coast Spartans and after this play I'll introduce my man in the booth with me for the next quarter or so as Kennedy's pass falls incomplete on first down, second down Rhinos and Luke Borg, mate you were uh, going to be a part of the Griffith Uni Thunder, you were part of the the uh, the organising crew there unfortunately had to take a, a break this year but uh, obviously love your sport, you've been involved in the sport down south and uh, well firstly welcome to the booth. Thanks for the introduction Kenny and you're exactly right, it was a bit unfortunate this year for Griffith Uni but no doubt next year I'll come back stronger than ever. He's also a flag football specialist. <laughs> Even though he dropped one of my touchdown passes in the end zone on the last game of our season. I think it was probably a metre or two in front of me, but anyway. <laughs> Agree to disagree. Kennedy now with a keeper. And that is Salupe Fafida with another strong tackle and Kennedy is down. Medic called immediately there. Nothing wrong with the tackle, it was just a physical one there, but the Rhinos quarterback in trouble and now all of Rhinos Nation is holding their breath. That is correct. It was a, quite a good hit. Um, been interesting watching a few pass plays. See the quarterback run out. Um, I think his coach might tell him to probably stop doing that. He's quite a, <laughs> quite an important player for the team. So I think it would have avoided seeing his quarterback hit that much. Um, I've just seen he'll get back up. Just seeing seniors head coach Sam Harkness just give a quick word to the medic there regarding him hitting the ground here so I think they, they are just double checking for a bit of a possible concussion but uh, that's a couple times now Sione as we might take a look at the replay here and Luke talk us through it oh, he's just coming down really well so I think looking at it he's probably watched the past Ooh, few plays and you just saw the back of Kennedy's head it was quite that. a hard hit down wasn't it yeah it's just a slam down and whilst these helmets do as much as they can that doesn't really do too much from stopping that brain moving around. He might be in a bit of trouble, Kennedy. 
and the Sports Computer has that speed that allows them to get the quarterback before even possible on a scrimmage. No. So. Yeah, so Lupe Fafita, I was having a chat to both of these coaches during the week as I do, and coach Jared Garrity spent a good few minutes there talking to the, uh, the kid they call Soup, and that is Sione Salupe Fafita. He's a second year player here, and one thing he really wanted to, to sort of single out was his ability to understand the game in space and, okay. and angles and whatnot, and so far that's everything we've seen on display so far. He's been doing great. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he goes the next few quarters, see if he gets that penetration through the defensive line, see if he gets the quarterback a bit quicker, but he's doing a great job. So... And what is, uh, it is always interesting to see how some of these second year players, after playing nine aside for a year, how they react to the extra two blockers on the field there. Obviously yeah. for defense, it's pretty clear cut. It's two offensive linemen. Yeah. On offense, it's a bit different. You have two different edge players, but that can come in the form of a safety, a linebacker, a D lineman. It, it's a bit straight, it's a little more straightforward for defense, but it does sort of affect some of your angles, particularly in the passing game, but also in the wider running game there. You don't know if you're going to get clipped by a tackle yes. coming up field. It is quite interesting, so with the additional two players, what the defensive players, what might put them off as well is those additional two offensive players, he might have an additional two wide receivers, and it is
scratches here, and they added two more when I went to go speak to coach Jared Garrity at the start of the, the game. But even with those numbers, they're still boasting a score of close to 2022. So they've more or less got enough players to be running an offense and a defense here. And yeah. I did speak to him about how he felt about that. And he argued, particularly in Niner's side in years past, it's not also an advantage having such a big roster because it can be hard to get people to sort of check back into gear yes. if you haven't been playing non-side. At least whilst there's fatigue to contend with, if you're playing both ways, you're always checked in, you're always concentrating. And you are. With, let's face it, with teenagers, sometimes it can be hard to have them concentrate for, for long periods of time when they're not being used. That is true. So it's, it's a bit of a mixed bag. It is. Um, so it's just also interesting trying to try and pull players off the field at times. No doubt when you're a teenager, you'll sort of pretty much play the whole game through. So that's probably another challenge for the coaches as well. That is, you're exactly right. Personnel issues. Personality. When you're only playing with, you know, an extra three on the sideline, it's hard to, it's not hard to maybe keep a track of who's supposed to be on there. Exactly. So the big challenge will be these holding calls. Right now, we'll Let's see if the coaches' talks have helped. Well, don't know what happened there. That was a very, very late substitution, getting a, an 11th defender on the field for the Brisbane Rhinos. Meanwhile, that is uh, the 25 and Stowers Alamani continuing his productive day, but he's probably had a good chance. That offensive ride probably gave him a chance to sort of cool down. Got pinged for an unsportsman like Conduct Paul. Saw that, yep. On uh, his last drive where they failed to punch it in. Outside of that, though, good day for him so far. Two rushing touchdowns so far, one of which is Screamer from close to halfway. That's correct. The Rhinos don't seem to have an answer. He's running around the defensive line. He's running through them as well. So hopefully the coaches have a bit of a talking to the defensive line. I know they're currently running with a five front, which should theoretically prevent any penetration, but he's still getting through. So it's it's a great watch. Yeah, they've committed to try and stopping any run here, sending a blitzer through Ooh. and they cause some pressure here. Ball's free, but for the second time today. That was a fantastic despite recovery. Despite the big hit from Camilleri at the end there, that's two fumbles now. The Morden Bay Sunshine Coast Spartan Raps team that have managed to recover. So Watch this, replay. look at that, look at the pressure there. Who was that number? Number 93. He who got went. through the line, fantastic. Well, when you put five in the line there, it's one-on-one -on -one blocking. If someone can beat their man, that's all it takes. That's exactly right. And the pressure's great on the quarterback, gives him no time to think, takes away potential for any long passes as well, so. Indeed, so. I've at least got the first names now of some of these players. Number 93, who just made their breakthrough there, is Rowan and Jack in number 32. So I can at least provide some sort of relief to that. And they were going deep down there for Cinnamon. He was wide open, not a defender within five yards of him there, but mm. couldn't quite track the ball. The Spartans offense, they've proved the deep ball is a legitimate threat here in this first half. That is, and looking at the Rhinos defense as well, in terms of reading that, it just seemed like whether the cornerbacks were keeping low. That's right, and the safety came across quite late. Mm. So. I did just notice there that Cuba was under pressure late there, had to throw off his back foot. Some impressive arm strength for uh, a bit of a late heave there with a the defender in his face. Third down and 10 now, 14 nils your score line. Had a big extended break in the middle of this second quarter due to an Alex Kennedy injured injury. Third down and 10. He's been pretty solid on third down, Huber. Looking for Pierre Mamode, who's been left open again. Shaking some defenders inside, but will be tackled by Callum Camilleri down at the Rhinos 20. And the tensions continue to flare. Another penalty play. marker down. That is after the play though, so at the very least, the first down should stand. That was a great play, he had plenty of time to throw. And the space he created just from getting downfield was fantastic. Unfortunately, there was a bit of tension there, um, very unnecessary. But bit of argy -bargy. Now. I'm not sure who's going to get pinned for it. It was Cinnamon, I believe, on the play. We don't have the referees mic'd up, so we're basing our calls off signals. So not Cinnamon, no, Kai Pima mode on the catch, sorry. So I was just double-checking there in case it was the running back 
in Stowers El Almani, another sportsman like Honda could be seeing an early shower for him. Looks like a loss of 10 yards, which is not helpful for the next play. Look, it, the penalties probably dull the shine on it, but on third and long, Huber has been money. That was fantastic. And the benefit was there was no holding calls as well. There was, so that's what I'm saying. The penalty, there was a penalty on the play, but it happened after the play had happened. So what that means is yardage comes into effect, but the down and distance does not. So they earned themselves a first down. And now you can see it is a first down and 10, but due to the penalty yardage, the, the 15 yards applied, they are starting from the Rhinos 41. So really their own worst enemy right now, although the Rhinos have managed to force two fumbles, unlucky not to recover either of them. Another high snap handled, and this time it's a new running back in. Taking that was a great defense right there. There was a bit of hesitation from the quarterback, where well, there was a bit of miscommunication between him and the running back. Not quite sure, but the Rhinos defense came down quite quick, and number 54. Yeah, Finian O'Hare, who's had a good couple of tackles to start his day. A little bit quiet since. But now they're starting to send these linebackers forward. They're going to... You're asking their linebackers to play a little more downhill opposed to side, opposed to sideline to sideline. Which I think is a fantastic move from the coaches right there. You want to give 25 any space at all. Well, I think they've... Sorry, 52. Yeah, yeah it is. I think they've just they've taken oh, Stowers out Lomani. Just, I think maybe just keeping them on the sideline, getting them to cool down a little bit. Maybe just trying to keep them fresh for later in the game here. But right now it's a new running back on the field. 52 is Jude Scott. Usual Mike Backer. Oh as Huber can't find any space and once again it's O'Hare in on the tackle but it is Jude Scott, their usual starting Mike backer who's now coming to the sideline a really good overall athlete so I wouldn't be surprised if he'd be a half decent makeshift running back but well, I think just another bit of miscommunication there he did looking for a toss but I don't think he was moving out quick enough so now we've got third and long Third and long indeed, ball on halfway. And as I, I mentioned earlier, all third and longs beyond seven yards have been converted by the Spartan Raptors. Now we've got three wide on the right, so. Yeah, it's a first change of formation, a trips formation down here to the near side of the field. Alone on the other side of the field there is Eden Neal. And downfield they go for Cinnamon. Almost an OBJS catch there from Cinnamon. Can't bring it in. Fourth down now from halfway. Great position for the Rhinos if they can stop this. How about the replay on this one? Great arm strength. Couldn't quite bring it in. Maybe needed some stickier gloves there, Cinnamon. But <laughs> Potentially. Coach Garrity did say to ex expect a big play or two out of Cinnamon. He is their sort of down downfield threat, but obviously in a different way to Pima Mode is. Pima Mode is definitely more of their speed guy. Correct. Cinnamon having a bit more height to him. Yeah, they trips the right might have been their detriment. There was quite a bit of traffic there, so that definitely didn't help. Yeah, it's uh, hey, typically, it's, you know, the trips sides are usually going to be open side of the field, but they just sort of fly out. But more and more offenses are happy to run trips on the short side. Huber with decent protection, buying time now though, under pressure, will take off himself on fourth down. Solid tackle there from the Rhinos. Fantastic move from the quarterback to get away from that tackle. Just unfortunately, his wide receivers couldn't get it open. Jack Camilleri having a huge day, probably more on defense than he is offense. The initial pressure there coming there from Bell and Tony. Ultimately the tackle on the net, on the Play being made there by Joy. First down and 10 Rhinos. Good defensive stand for them. A great field position for the Rhinos right in the middle of the field. Let's hope they can convert this. There's not much time left in the quarter. No, can't be a whole lot. Obviously, we don't have official timing here made available to us. And the time on screen is not official. It's more just a, a general guide and a chance for you to reference plays if you ever want to go back to them. But it does just give me a general idea of how many minutes real time have passed. 
First down and 10. Kennedy looks to be done for the day, so the day just seems to get busier for Camilleri, who dummies and takes on the defense, loses the ball, and this one might be recovered by the Spartan Raptors. Otherwise, would have been a huge run there for the Brisbane Rhinos, and defense has to get right back on the field. Everyone needs to remember what position they're playing. That was a fantastic move from the quarterback, which is quite unfortunate. I think what we saw there, just that rugby league hold, mm. is unfortunately not the strongest hold for a running back. He was trying to spot on the play who did force that fumble. They got the arm across and squeezed that ball out, but fumbles have not been kind to the Brisbane Rhinos they this afternoon. Not. Two to the Spartans, both are recovered by the Spartans, and now the same fortuitous bounce does not favour the Brisbane Rhinos when they cough their first fumble up for the day. A little bit of confusion now coming off of the field there is Maul. First down and 10. Back on the field now. Great run to the outside. The He's still going. Star running back there and uh, that was Elamani. And takes us well into Rhino's territory. Just watching the replay, just got outside. That was great blocking from the offensive line as well. And even the wide receivers continue blocking as well. That's always great to see. Fresh set of downs here. The zone block and working really well for uh, Stowers Alemani, who's looks really at home with this sort of one cut system. And always does help when your wide receivers continue blocking two downfield. Yes, and that's what turns seven yard gains into 17 yard gains. Here we go again. And they'll give it back to him, cuts it inside. Here he is, shot out of a cannon once more, and we'll take this inside the 15. Still a bit of tension on the field. So I know penalties for this time, which is good. Yeah, I think that was a great run through the middle there. Um, just watching out, watching him cut to his right. Um, it's fantastic to see, and also with the offensive line giving those gaps through the middle, it's just really helping him oh. get downfield. And we at some point missed the two minute warning there. That is half time amongst all of that. So the score for you at the end of two. The Raptans, they lead the Brisbane Rhinos 14 points to nil. Kenny Andres here, joined by Luke Borg for the time being. We'll take a half time break and we'll be back here on the other side here at Don Duncan Field. We are back, other side of halftime here, Junior Division Football here, Week 6 in Gridiron, Queensland. Currently the visiting Morton Bay, Sunshine Coast, Raptors Spartans, or Spartan Raptors, or Raptans, currently lead the home side, the Brisbane Rhinos, 14 points to nil, a pair of Stowers Elamani touchdowns in the first quarter gave them this 14 point lead alongside a two point conversion score not changed since then a couple of penalties preventing the mbsc side from adding any more points to that it's been a brave and resilient rhino side however who look like they'll be entering the second half with the ball but with a question mark of who's going to be playing quarterback in any case it very well could be this man wearing number 19, ooh, succumbing to a very strong tackle there from Stuart Ella. But we saw at halftime, warming up his arm, at number 19, Yasir Namir. And I'll use this opportunity to bring back my broadcast partner for this afternoon, Luke Borg. What do you think the Rhinos have ahead of him? Thanks for having me, Kenny. It'll be an interesting task for the coaches with your quarterback out, probably jumping between a few players to play quarterback. I think just trying to find consistency in your offense is the key here, so. Indeed it is, and it was Jai Camilleri taking the quarterback snaps with the back end of the second half, but as we noted, it was Namir who was warming up the arm at halftime. Here he is immediately taking a carry following returning the kickoff. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but we've got a penalty marker down on the far side of the field. Look at the replay. 
it'd be a flag for a false start from the Raptans defense from what I saw yes indeed you called it offside by the Raptans so that'll be a free five yards for the Brisbane Rhinos and they'll take whatever they can get right now in the break in case of emergency quarterback situation they've got going I agree there the more they can get down the field the more helpful it will be for them so let's see what they can do now in terms of their offensive plays I, think. I predict them probably doing a fair bit of run plays from quarterback let's hope the warm-up during the break help their new, their new starting quarterback yeah Alan Kennedy won't be returning I see his pads and jersey down in front of me under the injury 10 he's done for the day probably likely to a concussion and what a big stop there huge penetration and tackle by defensive lineman number 43 Psalms Tolai late addition to the team sheet look at the replay there the Raptans linebackers got down quick around the outside which hopefully the offensive linemen can spread a bit more the runners offensive linemen just to get the quarterback a bit more time I think someone who's new in the piece needs as much time as they can in the back to get a bit more comfortable as well and give him a bit more time to read and get a throw in there as well Jonathan Highton looking very quick off the edge of play you go keep an eye out for him on the on the edge of this defensive line bad snap here Namir is going to have to improvise he will manage to get over it so they hold on to possession but at the cost of over 10 yards on that fumble and that time the Rhinos actually get to recover a fumble if you want to call that a silver lining <laughs> I think just the next play here will be just to hold the ball as much as they can and punt it downfield they don't want to lose any more ground and they don't want to give the Raptors any more field position as well Well, with that said, the other situation is they could just go for it two times here. If any, if there's any place, the as we hold that thought for a second, and it'll be Namir's first pass attempt, and it'll be intercepted by Pierre Mamoud. He'll circle to the far side of the field before cutting it back into the teeth of the offense turned defense. Penalty mark is down, but Pierre Mamoud has crossed the plane. Multiple flags on the field, and a Rhino defender down. Number 52 is Ronnie Thistlewaith. Looking like to see he's what in severe there. pain. He's already down by the time we circle back to him. Now the penalty is against the Morton Bay Sunshine Coast side. And it happened before Pierre Mode managed to cross the plane here. So it will be Spartans, Raptors possession but no touchdown. It's not always good to see a player down. I'm not quite sure the injury count now for the Rhinos, but I don't think it can be any good at this stage. Well, obviously the, the one we have definitely confirmed is quarterback Alan Kennedy, but I'm seeing Jojo Selify in front of me on uh, in the uh, injury tent, still hasn't left the chair that he's been on since halftime. So I think he's dealing with the injury. On top of that, Jack and Jersey number three, 90, sorry, Rowan and jersey number 93. Doesn't look to be injured, but he also hasn't left his general area of the tent. But both players now, as I speak, looking to be walking towards their coach, who's looking like a very lonely coach on the sideline. Only one player flanking him, and that's jersey number 22, a player not on my team list. Might have been a late call up this morning. Yeah. Might get to a point you might need to put a jersey on Kenny. At this point, I don't know if I can pass as under 18 anymore, but I've shaved. He <laughs> <laughs> will be clapped off the field, Thistle West, that is. So now starting to be a little dire for numbers. The home side. And it'll be a real gutsy effort here. The trail by 14. The Spartan Raptors in a very good position to add to that lead now. Their offense coming onto the field inside red zone territory. Before the Riders and the positive, there is a lot of 
time for football left, so anything can happen at this stage. One thing I used to say when covering junior football, and nine aside touchdowns can be scored very quickly from any point in the field, but we're in 11 aside now, and it's uh, big plays are a little harder to come by. They are, especially improvised ones. Well, I thought he might have been injured, but coming back onto the field there is big number 60, uh, Jojo Salafai. And it will be another give to the running back there, and that was Elamani. There's another great run play around the outside there. Rhinos don't seem to have an answer for him at this point. Well, the notes on him given to me by Jared Garrity was that he had speed to burn and he has not made a liar of his head coach, Mr. Giovanni Stowers Elamani. Started the season a cornerback and they, they didn't actually have a, anyone cementing the position at running back. Thought his speed could be used on offense and I think that's been a, a pretty good strike. <laughs> a pretty good uh, striker genius if, you, if I say so myself. As Huber will aim for the end zone and there was a coverage breakdown as Pierre Mamode comfortably catches this in the back of the end zone. He gets on the touchdown scoring sheet now after a number of big plays. I don't think you've seen an easier play than that. Your wide open wide receiver, banner outside, the quarterback had plenty of time there to throw. Don't know if we'll uh, get another look at that there, but I'm thinking there might have been a situation with one of the interior receivers just drawing a fair bit of attention to those defenders, which allowed Pierre Mamoud to sneak out to the back of the end zone. That's touchdown pass number one for the day here in the second half. So Huber, low snap this time. Huber will just collect it himself and try to race to the pylon, but the troops get there. It's the sideline to sideline terror, that is, a Jai Camilleri. Great defense there from the Rhinos. Might be for the rest of the game, the Rhinos money to roll on their defense to try and turn the game for them. There's definitely plenty of opportunities to get sacked, potentially turn the ball over and try and get their offense in a good position in the field. So. Failed two-point conversion there, 20 nil. Your score here at the top of the second. Oh, sorry, top of the third, I should say. Second half. Definitely a few tied players out there for the Rhinos. Let's hope the coaches can keep them motivated and carry them through the rest of the game. Oh, catching the slip there by the big man for the Rhinos. And now using those same hands to fend defenders off. Inspirational stuff. Big Toby Crawford making some magic here on Don Duncan Field. That was a great play. And part of my ignorance, I was talking about the defense, but the special teams as well can definitely turn things for the team. So great play there from Rhinos. Here we get there. Pull up to the Aussie side with hands like that. <laughs> he might end up playing some running back before the day's over, but he's actually come to the side of the, the sideline now. Might have been a bit nicked up off that. First down and 10. Rhinos with a, a chance to uh, get one back here, trailing by three touchdowns. With the ball on the... 18 yard line, there's definitely plenty of opportunities now for the Rhinos to Pedal get a touchdown up. before the end of the quarter. This won't help though, delay of game here, and again this is something that can happen when you have a new quarterback in on the field, trying to get the play call out, trying to communicate to his players, we've grown accustomed to getting it in from one sort of type of player, that, can, that sort of communication can vary quarterback to quarterback. I think what we're, what we're going to see here for the rest of the quarter is the coaches being quite verbal and making sure their new quarterback does know the time count. They kind of fought to lose these yards and... And we're starting to see the first of the USQ Mustangs making their way here to West Mitchie. 
taking on the Brisbane Rhinos from 4 p.m. Ball on the Spartan Raptors 22. And that is prior to them walking off the five yards. Don't know if I missed a time out there, but there was an awful lot of time after that last penalty. I'm not quite sure either, but now we've got first and probably 16, 17. And they do, they'll fake to Camilleri and finding a bit of space now is Namir. Before Pierre Mamone has something to say about it. Ball's lost and recovered by the Spartan Raptors recovering that one there, number. Oh, I think I was going to say 74, but I think it's 34 on the field. That is the outside linebacker there and Johan Tangatua getting on the ball there. But Pima Mode forcing a fumble and again, fumbles being at the downfall of the Brisbane Rhinos today. It hasn't been a great day for either recovering defensive fumbles or holding onto the ball so far. It has, and that was a great body tack right there. He actually tackled towards the ball, which always does help cause those fumbles. So, great work for the coaches for the Raptans defense. Otherwise, though, it was a good play there. I like how they're trying to use a bit of misdirection to free up Namir there, who has got speed to burn. He does. Huber. That was Elamani before the big fella, Jojo, takes him down behind the line of scrimmage. That was a great def reef there from the defensive line. I mean, he saw he was trying to cut across to the right and cut him down before he could make that move. It's a nose tackle showing a bit of agility there. Taking on the center before locating. So that was Alamani. Salify. Sure. Jeez, he really stands out amongst that defense, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. He's doing a great job there. You can see. It's hard to miss him right there in the middle of that defense, that nose guard. Going again with five on the line of scrimmage, the Brisbane Rhinos. As this give is again to Stowers Alamani. Holding on to them is Zeph Weaver. And they take him down for a loss for one of the first times today. A bit of life being shown here by the Brisbane Rhinos. And that was a fantastic play. Getting past number 77, getting past his player and making that tackle and holding on for dear life. <laughs> So what you're going to do is get, get your hands on some cloth and hold on. Third down and long, which hasn't been a huge enemy to Huber in this offense. However, their last third and long, which looks like it's about to get third and longer, wasn't converted. And another delayed game. Both teams now a bit guilty of slow communication. An extra five yards now. 40 seconds they get, and the referee whistles the last play dead. Third down and very long, looking at about 20 yards to make here, but the pressure is good here from the Rhinos. Time bought from Hubar, but has to throw this pass out of bounds. Good defensive stand here from the Brizzy Rhinos. There's a lot of life in it, which is fantastic. There's great pressure from the Rhinos defense. 93, what's his name? Rohan came down, feel fantastic. Cut the quarterback off and caused him to throw out of bounds. And it's almost like they just chose to ignore that the fumble happened. Yes. You know, they got the ball back. <laughs> the fumble on the first play didn't help, but they just chose to turn a blind eye to that and just continue to focus on the good defensive stand they had prior to that. So. That's exactly right. They're doing a fantastic job. There's... A lot of motivation out there for the team, which is fantastic to see. For the first time today, the punt unit comes out from Moreton Bay, Sunshine Coast. Back to return is kick returner, punt returner, quarterback, and former wide receiver, Namir. But it is a bad punt. The pressure was good. It will take a rhino bounce. So right now, Fortune favoring the home side as they'll have very solid field position. In fact, really, you could argue all they, their offense lost last drive was time it's like that fumble didn't even exist exactly and i think if you're uh fraser murr here you just don't mention it exactly <laughs> right you just move on and go back here i wouldn't be surprised if they go back to the same play call here 
I wouldn't be surprised. I think their coaches would have talked to them to say, tell them it's all about possessing the ball and making sure your hands cover the top of the ball to prevent any further fumbles. So first down and ten here for the Brisbane Rhinos, and well, we've got another delay game coming. It looks like. Where is that? Well, I'm just double checking. That was a odd signal. I don't know if that was a. Thought for a second, I thought it might have actually been like some sort of uniform infraction, like a timeout missing. But usually, there's a timeout costed. I don't know if that perhaps they need to. Uh, Tim Redshaw is, needs to communicate to both off offenses now because that's three delay a game penalties between the two teams over the last two drives. I agree. There might be some words that maybe spoken to a couple of coaches to prevent this, prevent this from happening any further. First down and 15, ball shifted back to the Spartan Raptors. 26, Namir under pressure, has to throw off his back foot, waiting under it though. Kai Pimamode, who can score from anywhere on the field and we'll have a host of blockers as he strides his way into the end zone for another Spartan Raptors touchdown had a defensive touchdown earlier in the game called back for a penalty nope laundry on this particular play though and that, was, that will stand I'm just scanning the field one more time for any flags that play will stand that was quite unfortunate the quarterback had plenty of time there just didn't see any the receivers get any space there was one receiver downfield which he threw to unfortunately was swarmed by three defensive players and that's what happens when you have three on one unfortunately So 26 nil conversion to come. As they'll hand off to Stowers Alamani who runs this ball in with ease and extends their scoreline to 28 points to nil. And looks like they firmly take control of this game here as we get to the middle stages of the second half. I think when the coaches do their 3-2-1 for the game, he's definitely looking as a 3 or a 2 at this point. Yeah, whether it's offensive or defensive, scored a receiving a touchdown. The last two touchdowns have been number 11 and 3, if you want to include the one that got called back. But that should be no surprise. He's been around the league for a, a number of years now, Kai Pierre Mamode. I remember calling his name in the in the junior division back when he was the, the younger of the two junior divisions, if you will, with their juniors and Colts. He was actually catching passes for one of the Rhinos members called the Shanks, who now moved into Brisbane and playing for the Brisbane Rhinos the last few seasons as part of that big junior win there with Calder Shanks playing at quarterback up at the Sunshine Coast. And moonlighted as a kicker as well. It does. What hasn't he done today? Can I pee in the mode? And this time again, I wouldn't say this was an attempted onside kick but they're keeping it away from some of their more dangerous returners hosted by the Brisbane Rhinos and Namir and Camilleri and the Rhinos were set up at around their own 40. It'll be interesting to see what the coaches do here whether they continue with their run plays or potentially look at shorter passes. Yeah, I think that might be the situation here they might might just have to continue on the ground I would think it is hard to get someone if they haven't been properly versed even that week in passing the football it's hard to go back in cold arm and try to make it happen but he's lined up a good six yards deep here in the mirror it's an awkward snap and the misfortune continues for the Brisbane Rhinos and this will be another chance for the Spartan Raptors to add more points on the board I think in this scenario they might have need to take them off field for the next few plays if possible and do a bit of practice. I mean that's happened a couple of times now. But I don't think they want to carry that further through the rest of the game. Yeah, not an unfamiliar sight in those situations, but despite what I said earlier, fatigue can play a factor, particularly if you're on the wrong side of the scoreboard. If you're playing both ways. 
those snaps can get a little higher, a little lower than you intend them to be. That's exactly right, and if you're playing strong sa playing safety as well, it's not going to help either. Spread formation again, and here he goes, adding to his rushing total today, Stowers, Elamani, getting this ball inside the six. So this offensive line, particularly the right side of this wrapped hands offensive line are doing such a wonderful job in freeing him up. So many of his big runs have come down that right hand edge. They're doing a great job blocking. The defense aren't getting any penetration. So it's definitely giving him plenty of time to get on the outside and make yards. Try to give him a, a shout out there, number 60. 65 on there, Orlando, Leah Tuol. Doing a great job blocking down the right hand side. They try the left this time. Not as much luck as Camilleria and company take down Stowers Alamani behind the line of scrimmage. So much of the attack from the Spartans Raptors has been focused to this right hand side, both passing and running. It has been. I noticed in the first half, the quarterback was always rolling out to his right as well. So they always had plenty of time. But no doubt, you do need to change it up a bit. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. And I think they want to make sure they keep things interesting so the defense doesn't know what they're doing every single play. Spartan Raptors take their first time out here. We might take a quick time out ourselves. Be back here in about 40 seconds. here on the other side of that timeout. Once again, another acknowledgement to all of our sponsors involved here for this game and the, the games to be. Second down and goal here for the Spartan Raptors. Had some troubles in the first half in the red zone, but have since remedied it. Huber with a little bit of a play action and a pass to the end zone. I believe, oh, I thought for a second it might have been complete. Couldn't be completed there. The pass intended to Possibly Stuart Eller there in the in jersey number 28. Yeah, great place of running to the right. Just unfortunately could hold on to it, but know that the next one he'll make sure that keeps his hands on it and gets that touchdown. Yeah. Had a bit of a, a zig concept on the inside there, trying to free up some of these slot receivers. Third down and goal. And resilience shown here from the Rhinos, but breaking the tackles as tackles as that was Elamani. Jojo Seloff. Selafai loses his helmet towards the back end of that. I think that means by rule he has to step off for a blade. Does another great tackle coming across, watching the replay there. He was always on, which is always great to see from a defensive player. And you see the way that he just naturally carries the football style as Elamani. It's hard to believe. He was playing anything other than running back at the start of the season. That's exactly right. The way he moves, the speed he has has been fantastic. And I don't believe he's had a fumble this game, has he? No, no. Which coaches oh, always love. Yeah. So, injury time out here. And I'm not quite sure which number is down. This looks like this could be another extended one. We might take this as another chance to take a bit of an injury timeout ourselves.
And we're back, and it was that was El Amani, the man of the moment, who was injured on that last play. His helmet off and made his way to the sideline. So they'll have to have a bit of a change up at tailback here, and I think that might also mark the end of the third quarter. So at the end of three, the Spartan Raptors, hailing from both Morden Bay and the Sunshine Coast, have a 28 to nil lead with a firm grip on another competition win here in week six. And they'll uh, be looking to go have a three and one record. I think it might be the man who spelled Stowers Elamani earlier and Jude Scott, the all-round athlete. Another one of the sunny coast lads of this Morton Bay Sunshine Coast contingent. Another one of the veteran players there and I think it was Coach Garrity who also said Jude took uh, linebacker Hunter Harris won under his belt a lot this season and really helped refine his ability and Hunter's had a wonderful first half there. You've seen some great tackles there from his wheelbacker, his linebacker tag team mate. And probably no short part in the involvement of Jude Scott's mentoring. And speaking of that man, here he is now patiently waiting for blocks to set up and it'll be Crawford taking him out around the Rhinos too. I think we saw a lot better player there this time. There was a bit of miscommunication in the second quarter between Jude and the quarterback, but we saw there it's much better play and head onto the ball as well. So it's a good sign for the remain, remaining quarter. And Huber uh, has been a very patient day and my apologies, I'd lost track of the, uh, the downs there. That was actually fourth down on that last play. So it was a big goal line stand for the Brisbane Rhinos. My apologies. Got caught up there between the Stowers Alemani injury and the change of quarter. So a chance now, but they'll be working out of their own end zone and a safety here from the Morton Bay Sunshine Coast Spartan Raptors. I think grabbing that safety was the nine, the edge player, and Jonathan Hyten. See what we saw there, he shot straight through the line, which is great play. And the coach will be very impressed with what, what they saw and will no doubt want to continue that through the rest of the quarter. And you see what Coach Moore was trying to do there. You've got a backup quarterback who's fast. You're trying to find a way to get him to the edge there. Uh, unfortunately him though, very eyes up football from from the, uh, the outside linebacker in Hyten. I think knew what, what the situation was and I agree. I think what we saw there, the coaches might try and look at potentially getting some more help in the backfield where they can get some more blockers there for the Rhino just to give that quarterback a bit more time. And use, use his speed to get out to the edges as well. I did see uh, Coach Harkness, the, uh, the the senior coach here at the Rhinos, having a quick chat to uh, Fraser Murr at halftime and Coach Harkness has been no uh, stranger to the idea of having to make quarterback adjustments with the way the quarterback injuries has been happening in the, the senior team there. And they had to throw Sam Bull in as an emergency quarterback against the Gold Coast Stingrays where they had to whip up a triple option out of nowhere. As this kick takes a very friendly Rhino bounce. Kai Pimamoto has time though to try and set up his blocks. Camilleri there is trying to chase him down. Big right foot step takes him up to the left hand sideline. He's found space. PMMO using that speed. But eventually taken down at the Rhinos 24. Some more explosive play there from 11. Kai PMMO. I think we saw there Camilleri do the tackle. Number 31. And you see him actually, he beats a couple of blocks early, so he had to cover a lot of ground to chase that play. He down. did a fantastic job. He continued throughout the whole play and he probably ran a few kilometers there just trying to chase down the, the running player. Fair to say, he has been a standout for the Brisbane Rhinos and obviously a, a struggling effort here. Whether it's him taking carries, having to fill in a quarterback, or probably more notably his efforts on defense and special teams, he has been a standout for the uh, Pewter Red and Black this afternoon. Huber, and the quarterback will give to Jude. No, sorry, it's that was Alamani back. But this time the Rhinos interior defense 
Shut him down behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two on that carry. It was a Salify again, making his way through the offensive line and look at the replay there. He just continued with the play, made the tackle. So he's been doing a fantastic job for the Rhinos up front. For those tuning in for the 4 p.m. game, I can tell you one thing: the humidity's faded away a little bit here in Mitchelton, but uh, the sun certainly has come out in. Uh, Make it up for lost time, I should say. Sunscreen will be needed here this afternoon. Huber. Bit of a tight end in on that play as they go back to the left hand side with Stowers Elamani. He cuts his way for a gain of 10 yards. Just shy of moving the chains though, I think. I'm waiting for a first down signal. None on the play here, so that'll set him up for third and short. But That's some great. Movement down the left hand side. I think what we saw in the previous quarter, they couldn't get any space there, but they've probably made some offensive line adjustments and it's great to see that movement. Coach Hollywood Rowe calls it the staircase run there for running backs, just having the acknowledgement of being able to use their blocks and work their way up the field up the sideline, almost like a staircase. Third and short. They've moved their right slot receiver in very tight to the line here. It was going to be another left-hand side run for Stowers Elamani, but a false start on the play will move them back five yards, turn this third and inches into a third and six. A bit unfortunate for the offense, and now they've lost about five yards there. No doubt they'll probably go for the fourth if they don't make it here, but the way they've been moving forward, looks like they'll probably more than likely get this third down and be first and goal. An update over at the Junior Stingrays and Bears game down at the Gold Coast. The Stingrays, they continue their strong season. They're late in the fourth and have a 40 to 16 point lead over the Logan City Bears. Third down and six. We give to Stowers Alemani this time, going back to the favorable right side. Puts a big shimmy and juke out to the right hand side. We'll take this down inside the seven. And looks like he got the first down there. Bit of helmet contact, but nothing on towards. He's been having a great game in terms of his following his players, following the blocks, getting to the outside. It's no doubt the coaches are very happy with his performance in today's game. First down and goal. Ball is on the Rhinos 8. 28 nil. Spartans lead. A little bit of a hand audible there from Huber. Just tipping off which way he wants. Still was Elamani to either run or protect. It will be a run to the left here. It's some good defense there by from Namir and O'Hare. Strong tackle in the backfield. Very strong play there from the Rhinos. Straight to see their defense stay motivated and getting those tackles and no doubt hoping for a turnover to alleviate the pressure. There's been some great plays on the run defense from the Brisbane Rhinos. Unfortunately, it's been sort of rocks and diamonds for them. They've been tackling Giovanni Stowers Elamani in the backfield for one play, but then he'll bust off a 17 yard carry the next. That is they great. would love to try to find some sort of happy medium. Second down and goal from the Rhinos nine. Trying to increase their lead. The Raptans. Here goes Huber dancing, trying to find his way downfield, but it's a sack on the play. O'Hare. In a trailing effort, has had a wonderful day defensively. That was a great move there from the Rhinos. Just watching the replay there, the quarterback had plenty of time, but you can see just he kept continuing, he kept chasing downfield, and unfortunately, the, none of the receivers could get open enough for Huber. And, had to take the sack. Unofficial assist there to the 77 and Zef Weaver corralling Huber back into the pocket for O'Hare to take down. Third and goal now. All the way back to the Rhinos 19. That has it a guess. Possibly some uh, red zone offense might be on the practice schedule for the uh, Raptor and Spartans team over the next week. Had no trouble getting down inside the 10, but I've had trouble staying there. 
They do, and they've had trouble converting the last quarter to one touchdown. He wants Pima Mode in the back of the end zone. Pima Mode fights for it, but as does cornerback Ayush Prakash, who knocks that ball away and brings up fourth down for his Brisbane Rhinos defense. And that was a great play, keeping his eye on the ball and also keeping his eye on the man. Placed himself in the great position between the player and the ball and was able to get that pass deflection. You know, the last two pass plays for Huber have been unfortunate. Let's just see if they continue with that or they move back to the run play. Yeah, it's not exactly a hard decision here when you've got the lead here, fourth and goal, and I'm sure they'll just try to hoik this up into the end zone. But it is Geo in the backfield. And they will hand this ball off. Use that right-hand side of the offensive line again. It's looking pretty good, and he will be stopped inside the five. So it will be a turnover and downs for the Spartans. But I don't think they're going to be too disappointed with that, especially giving the Rhinos the football back deep in their own territory. No, I don't believe so. I think it's at a point in time that the coaches might be looking at continuing run plays and trying to run the clock out. I know that the Rhinos will try and get at least a touchdown here. Do want to give a shout out there to, to number 20, Lennox Salmore. Doing a great job blocking to the first level and then getting all the way downfield, helping his running back out, trying to increase his chances. The Rhinos take a timeout here. That was a great play. A lot of coaches talk about that second level, especially with your, your offensive lineman. It's great to block, but to continue downfield and help your players downfield to get more yards. Coaches are always happy and impressed with the players that, that do that. What is fortunate here for the Rhinos, with their big goal line stand last drive, they actually stopped this game from moving to a 35 point margin, which would have moved the rest of this quarter to a running clock. So, maximizes their chance for their offense to get onto the field and try to get a score here. They've used the timeout to think about it. I will also give a mention now, in case I do miss the two minute warning that it is, Powder Puff Week as they've dubbed here by the Rhinos management, where the club is going to be acknowledging the wives and girlfriends and parents and mothers in particular of the boys here and I think at the two minute warning they will be uh, calling the mothers out for a lot of the players and handing them I think some sort of oh, is that not yet not yet just <laughs> I was in charge of giving the parents a heads up when the two minute warning happened then might have prematurely said that there because I think I've put some things in motion but we can't be too far off to be fair but yes they are using this week to uh, celebrate the women in the players lives here and for the junior division they're particularly celebrating their mothers which at the at full time of this game the Rhinos players will be presenting their the uh, you know the significant mothers in their lives with uh, flowers and very much taking influence from a lot of the American traditions and it's a bad snap here and it will be fielded by Camilleri unfortunately for another safety so the second safety on the day here for the Raptans that'll extend their score to 30 points to nil I think there might have been a bit more miscommunication between the center and the quarterback but that's all right now we're going for a kick from the Rhinos here at the 20-yard line. I will actually, I think we've had the score. We might have missed the safety in there early in the first half. The score actually is 32-0. Across there, there's been two safeties scored in this game here. So 32 points to nil, the, the current score. But yes, um, on top of the uh, the rest of the Powder Puff uh, events for this evening at... Uh, the 4 p.m. game, the seniors game there, all the wives, girlfriends and mothers have been invited into the clubhouse where they're going to be presented with a complimentary glass of Prosecco and I think a, a few flowers or, or some sort of gifts there just to acknowledge their uh, the sacrifices and the efforts they need to make during these football seasons. It can be very long being a mother or a significant other of their partners during the, uh, the football season. Football can be a very time-consuming mistress for a lot of the players during the Gridiron Queensland season. And this looks like will be another big return here for the Spartan Raptors. And despite the loaf of bread carry, it'll be a huge return 
for the Morden Bay Spartan Raptors. Bringing that back there is Johem Dongatua. We'll bring this all the way back to the Rhinos 11. Nice tackle on the play there. Trying great. to save six. Great running and great blocking there Who as else? well. Number 31 with a tackle again. Always staying alive. He has certainly given his best efforts this afternoon. I mean, the coaches here for the Raptors have to be very impressed with their, their players getting those second level blocks continuing downfield it's it's made all the difference Rhinos have taken another okay we've had <laughs> here's a funny situation <laughs> we've had two officials call timeouts one's calling it called it a Rhinos timeout and okay we've got a correction now it is officially a Brisbane Rhinos timeout and uh, yeah, we had White Hat <laughs> Tim Redshaw calling that a Spartans Raptors timeout, and we had the the rest of the officiating crew calling that a Rhinos timeout. But it is officially a Rhinos timeout, and by my count, that's their second of the half. I just like to say I think what the Rhinos are doing are fantastic in terms of acknowledging the mothers, wives, and girlfriends and partners of the players here. Gridan can be a long season between training and the games. It can be quite long days as well. And I think it's always great to acknowledge those who contribute to the game and who help their, who help out as well. You know, and particularly the mothers with the in the junior division. There's a lot of driving, not just the games, but the trainings and other sort of events that might happen during the football season. Jersey presentations, extra film sessions, you know, end of year awards. And yeah, it's nice just to have a, a week to acknowledge their contribution to the footballing careers, if you will, of all these players. Right, coming back from the timeout now, moving towards the back end of this fourth quarter, 32 points to nil. The lead is here for the Water Bay Sunshine Coast Raptors Spartans. And the first and goal from the 10 yard line. So that was Elamani, shift from right to left. Spread formation otherwise as they run this play back to the right hand side and navigating his way for his third touchdown today is Giovanni Stowers Elamani. You watch a replay here that cut across to the right is fantastic. The runners came came in quite quick but was able to get past them and then follow his blockers downfield and get that touchdown. Adding another two points, that makes the score 38 points to nil. And that will move us to a running clock for the rest of this quarter. Although much of the damage has been done prior to the running clock. And a nice stop there. Once again, O'Hare has been another probably standout on this Brisbane Rhinos defense. And they'll deny the two-point conversion. The score will remain 38 points to nil in favour of the MBSC Raptans. That was just a great tackle there. In the previous touchdown play, he did get through the line. Just unfortunately, just missed. Sounds like the mother is about to be acknowledged here, as we aforementioned, for the Brisbane Oranos Powder Puff Week. But yeah, this is an impressive effort for the uh, the Raptans here because they are missing a bunch of their key starters on the field here. And then a lot of the players they did have available were only going to be available in case of emergency. One of those being long-time veteran now, um, Declan Garrity, I believe. One of the few Sun Devil reps on this team is one of the youngest members, if not the youngest member, of the most recent junior Queensland Sun Devils, which of course was coached by... Former Rhinos head coach John Booker, who's back in Europe. And another onside kick attempt here from the Spartan Raptors. And that will, well, it depends on where you sit on the side of that. The onside kick attempts this late in the game with the lead. You know, the Gold Coast Stingrays do it unabashedly. <laughs> and the Spartan Raptors clearly happy to follow their lead as well. Look at that play now, what I'm thinking towards the end of the season. And oh, sorry about that. We've got the recovery. The player who recovered is down 
injured now. So we'll take another injury time out here. It looks like we're going to have another extended wait here. So we might take this opportunity to have a quick breather ourselves here. Not long left here in this round six matchup. Brisbane Miners hosting the Morton Bay at Sunshine Coast at Raptor Spartans. And back out of that timeout there, and it's that was Elamani continuing to tote this football. Strong tackle there from Crawford, who had that big play off the kick return earlier in this game. Yeah, you see, definitely performing on all all sides of the ball, which is always great to see. Definitely a number of tied riders out there. Let's let's hope they might be able to get a, a turnover and maybe get some points of the ball before the game finishes. Yeah, this definitely had to work overtime here. This Rhinos unit almost can't really call them an offense or a defense. It's <laughs> everyone pitching in on both sides of the ball at this point. And a Jude Scott will come in to relieve it running back, and his physical style is noted as he charges forward. For a chain moving first down. That was a great run there. Some very good palm offs as well. And I like to say it was great seeing Crawford there trying to go for the strip. Go for the go for the strip there. Just unfortunately couldn't get a hold of it. Yeah, you're right there. Trying to rake the ball out of the hands of Jude Scott. And there is our official terminate warning. So two minutes remaining. In the game here, 38 points to nil. The Raptans leading the Rhinos. And Jude Scott fumbles this ball. Again, the fumble gods shine upon the uh, Morton Bay Sunshine Coast Spartan Raptors. Three fumbles in this game. Recovered all by the offense. We can see there was a bit of frustration for the Rhinos. They were so close to getting that ball back. I think should provide a bit more motivation for the next play to see what they can do and actually yeah. try and get an interception or a, or a strip. Big Lockie Moore thought he might have been gifted a uh, turnover there, but good heads up football from Tom Huber. To dive immediately on the football. No Cam Newtoning here. Second down and long. And under centre, Jude, not Jude Scott, sorry, uh, Tom Huber goes to take the knees and see this game out. No more football needed here in this round six matchup. So we'll use this opportunity as the academic knees take place here. Lukey, star players for you in the game there. You've been most of the game there. Uh, for, I'd like to do a... I'd like to focus on a fair bit of the Spartans' offensive linemen. So on the right-hand side, you have Samoa, who's been doing a fantastic job getting blocks and creating space for his running back. I'm just trying to remember there, number 55 as well. 65, yeah. Oh, 65. Wait, Tao, he's been doing a fantastic job as well. I think offensive linemen don't get enough credit in games. I mean, right. it's, not the, it's not that swish style player, the quarterback and the running back, but they create a lot of space for, for the quarterback and the running back. And 
let them do their stuff. And there it is, full time here officially at West Mitchelton. The SCS MB Spartan Raptors have come out resounding victors here in week six on the back of a big performance there from a running back. Giovanni Stawas Elamani, as well as number 11, Kai Pimamode, both grabbing multiple touchdowns each. The final score here, 38 points to nil. And the Spawn Raptors add their third victory of the season in their pursuit for second spot as the Gold Coast Stingrays look to remain unbeaten at the top of the juniors ladder. Big thanks to you for everyone who tuned in for your company. Big thanks to you, Luke Borg, for keeping me company here in the booth for the most of that game there. Stand by from 4 p.m. We will be having the USQ Mustangs here in town to face off the Brisbane Rhinos.